blessing upon all the mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers. You don't have to own it if you're a great-grandmother, that that might make you proud. Raise your hand. All, all, all mothers here, if you wouldn't mind. God's blessing upon you all. We want to start with a little levity, though. We'll bring mothers up again in the prayers that we have later. For certainly they and we all need prayers. But have a little, little something that might be fun. Uh, when I was growing up back home, we had a sandbox. It was actually a quick sandbox. I was an only child, eventually. <laughs> I, w- I like to go to children's art exhibitions. Mothers, children, you get where I'm going with this. So when I go to the uh, children's art exhibits, I always like to go, but they have all the, all the artwork up on refrigerators. <laughs> uh-huh. And when I was a baby, when I was born, I kept a diary. Day one, still tired from the move. (laughs) Day two, everyone talks to me like I'm an idiot. (laughs) St. Paul says that we exist and live in the darkness of this world. And we see the world briefly and distorted as in a mirror that has not been polished. In an unpolished mirror, so our vision is distorted. We don't see clearly in the darkness. Recently, I was going along and my, wearing my glasses and my prescription ran out. So I had to go get some, get another prescription and some new glasses. The thing is, I've always had a problem that one of my eyes is lazy, my left one. Um, it's lazy. So I had to go get a new prescription and the doctor was able to fix it this time for me when I went. But the thing is, is now I'm seeing two of you all. There's, yeah, really, I'm seeing double, you know. And then when I put them on, it takes me a couple of minutes for it to be able to sink itself, and I see you as you really are. Um, I told my dear wife, Liz, the other morning, Liz, I see two of you. You're double, just more to love. <laughs> I've thoroughly embarrassed you, I'm sorry. The world is in darkness. Its sight is distorted by the fear that leads to a lust for power, anxiousness for control in a world that is not controllable. Its sight is distorted by cravings for that which does not satisfy the grasping ego or the anxious mind. For those reasons, for these reasons, the world is darkened by its distorted values. It is unable to see the glory of the radiance of the love of God placed within each of us by his presence and the radiance of the created order that we enjoy. At the time the Gospel of John was written, there was a deadly feud going on between John's community, the writer of the Gospel of John, his community that wrote the Gospel of John, and the feud was against the synagogue. I should say the Gospel of John might have been written by a woman. We don't know. Might have been written by a mother. We don't know. It is against this backdrop and within this context that Christ's words against the world, the darkness of the world, must be taken. He says something in this lesson that I find extreme and somewhat disturbing. I am not praying for those in the world, he says, but only for those whom you gave me. That Christ would not pray for the salvation of the world and those who lived in darkness is counter to everything I think we've heard about Jesus and the other Gospels. Jesus prays for his enemies. Jesus prays for those who persecute him. Jesus prays for all people that they may be one. I do not pray for the world. Now, the world that lives in darkness, it seems to me, is the world that needs the most praying for. Maybe the darkness that I live in, the distortions that we all have during the course of our lives and our living, maybe we need to be prayed for as much as anyone else. As far as I know, not any of us yet are fully enlightened, though we are on that path. 
And Christ and the presence of the Spirit within us is taking us in that direction. We hope and believe that the Spirit is doing so. It's a strange mark of the Gospel of John. It's strange to me that Jesus or Christ is continually pointing to himself. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the vine, you are the branches. I am, I am, and so on. In the other Gospels, Jesus is continually pointing to the Father beyond himself, to the creator of all. Seems strange to me that in the Gospel of John, Jesus is pointing to himself and making himself the center of things. And I have to wonder about that. And that's another way in which the Gospel of John is very strange to me compared to the other ones. Particularly, to put it bluntly, it is not clear to me how Christ's malevolent attitude and tone can be congruent with the teaching that God is love which we hear elsewhere in the letters of John. Some say that God's love does not extend to those of other religions, that those of other faiths or of no faith cannot and will not be saved, will not be made whole. I ask you, are the Dalai Lama and Gandhi beyond the love of God? And of the ancients, Are Mohammed, the ancient Jews, and the Hebrews of Abraham's day without hope? And those who perish for their faith in the Holocaust, are they condemned to not be saved? What sort of God would it be if that were the case? What sort of people would God's people be? What sort of people would they be who acted upon those beliefs? We here today live in a darkened world, but not without the presence of God in and among us. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I didn't have a choice in that matter. The grace of God is prevenient. We are children of God, made in the image of God, and no one is excluded. And if any of us could get there because we were good enough, righteous enough, or because we believe the right doctrine, or we're we're of the correct political party, no one will get in. We live in in a darkened world, but not without the presence of God. We do endeavor to keep God's command to love one another, His ever-present Spirit is working among us to help us to do that. And we endeavor to give our lives, such as mothers and fathers do, to lay down their lives, their time, their ego, their energy, to raise their children. The meaning, then, of the Gospel is that God loves us, in that He freely gives of Himself that we may have abundant life through the wisdom of His ever-present, ever-wise Spirit to realign our lives, that we might see clearly, more clearly, love others more dearly, and follow Christ more nearly day by day. God first created us in His image and also the glory of the created order. The world, therefore, is not a place of complete darkness, It is in the process of being renewed and is for all people whether or not they believe Christ is the only way. For you see, God is love. 